Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at different types of motion graphs and how to change in between them, specifically the position versus time graphs and the velocity versus time graphs. Uh, now in the position versus time graphs we have on the y-axis the position or the location of the object. Um, on the other graphs we have its uh, velocity and it can be positive or negative. So we're looking at velocity in two different directions here. Uh, I want to point out that this is not going to be the best way to learn this material. Watching this video is not the best way to learn this material initially, uh, but this will work well for a, a review. Uh, initially, you probably want to be playing with some kind of a motion detector uh, system so that you can directly see what the object is doing and what the graph that corresponds with that motion looks like. Now, the trick with uh, going between these two different graphs is that there's a step in between and that step is visualizing what the object would be doing. I can't go from one graph to the other um, without thinking about that. Uh, now in a calculus class you might work on problems like that um, but this isn't a calculus class. This is all physical situations and so we might as well be able to picture these things. And, uh, that's that's going to be useful for a lot of different aspects of this. So. Let's uh, try an easy one first. Let's say our position versus time graph looks like this, and that ought to be a horizontal line. It's a little curved, but we'll pretend it's horizontal. Um, and we want to figure out what the velocity versus time graph is. Well, if the position versus time graph is this horizontal line, then that means that the position starts at some value, and as time goes by, as we move to the right, as time goes by, our position value doesn't change. So what is an object doing if its position doesn't change? Well, it's, it's just sitting there. It's holding still. So that means our velocity would be zero. So all the way across, we've got a velocity of zero. Now, that didn't look, turn out very well. It's, it's that, there we go. We've got a velocity of zero all the way across. Now, we could also... Um, be uh, dealing with this in the other direction. I could give you the velocity versus time graph and ask you to make the position versus time graph. And this one's a little bit funky because we know that our object, um, according to, to this graph down here, our object is stopped, but we don't know where it's stopped. So on our position graph, we know that we're going to have a horizontal line, but uh, we don't know where to start that line on the y-axis. So you'd probably uh, want to look for more information there. You know, it starts at a position of zero, or it starts at five meters from the sensor, or whatever here. Um, if there's nothing like that, then any um, starting position would be equally valid. So I could have a horizontal line like this, or a horizontal line like this, or a horizontal line like this, and all of those things are, uh, are equally valid. Now let's look at a velocity versus time graph that looks like this. Very similar to the one we just looked at, still a horizontal line for velocity, but that's no longer at zero. So we have some positive velocity. That means our object is moving. The horizontal line, though, tells us that the velocity isn't changing over time. It's not going up and it's not going down, so it's not speeding up or slowing down here. So what's that look like on our position versus time graph? Well. For every increment of time that goes by, as we move farther to the right here, our position is going to change by a certain amount. And since our velocity is constant, for every increment of time, our position changes by the same amount. So let's say we were going at a constant velocity, just to, to put some numbers with this. Maybe this is a velocity of one meter per second. So that means that for every one second that goes by um, in our, our time dimension, our position is going to change by one meter. Go by one second, up one meter. Over one second, and up one meter. And since that velocity isn't changing, that shape of the graph isn't going to change either. We're just going to have a straight line that gets farther and farther away from its starting point. Now again, if you're given the velocity versus time graph and asked to find the position versus time graph, you'd need extra information to tell you where the object started because this graph that I've just drawn is exactly the same or would produce the same velocity graph, um, this, this velocity graph, as this new one. And if we had a line up like this, that'd be the same thing. As long as these lines are parallel, they would all have the same velocity graph because remember, the slope of this line 
equals velocity. And since they're all parallel, they would all have the same slope. Now let's say that we have that straight line still, and I'm not sure why I have two lines here. Um, we have that straight line, and this time it's angling downward. So again, as time goes by, if we look at some increment of time, we go down the same amount each increment of time. Let me draw that here. So as a certain amount of time goes by, we go down the same amount in position. So we have a consistent velocity here, but our position is becoming more and more negative. So that must mean that our velocity is a constant negative value here. So this object is still moving at a constant pace, it's just going in whatever direction we defined to be negative. Now here's a little trickier one. We have our velocity no longer constant here. Our velocity as time goes by is increasing or is becoming more positive. So what's that going to look like on a position versus time graph? Well our object, it starts at rest. It's not moving at this very first uh, instant here. It has a velocity of zero. So we're going to have just an instant, and again, position can start anywhere. I'm going to start down low because it looks like I'm moving in the positive direction. We're going to have just a moment there where our position graph is horizontal, where we have no change in position for some change in time. And then the next little bit, we're going to have well, a little bit of a change in position for that same period of time, and then a little bit more change in position for that same amount of time, and a little bit more change in position. So our line gets steeper. Remember the velocity versus time, or sorry, the position versus time graph, um, the slope of that is our velocity. So if our velocity is increasing, then our slope should be increasing as well, and our graph is getting more and more curved upward. And let's take one more look here at, uh, at one more situation. We got our position graph um, making this little arc here. So the graph goes up and comes back down. And we could explain that with a couple of different motion types, but uh, we, we need to understand that our object, it starts off at whatever we're calling this position zero. It's moving in the positive direction, and then at this point up here, it turns around, moves back, this would be in the negative direction, back toward its starting point, which it eventually reaches right at the end here. Um, so this might be, say, a ball being thrown up and then falling back down, or uh, you know, a person running this direction and then running back the way that they came. Um, both of those explain this, this motion type. So what's the velocity look like there? Well, our velocity to begin with, if we look at the slope here, um, velocity is going to be fairly high to start with, and it's a positive velocity. So initially, we are uh, uh, moving in a certain amount of time. We're moving a pretty big distance there. In a little bit, the amount of distance that we cover in that same increment of time drops to smaller and smaller values until eventually we don't move any distance in a certain amount of time. Uh, so you see at the very beginning, we have pretty big changes in a certain amount of time. That means a pretty big velocity. So let's draw that. We start out with a pretty big velocity, which at this point right in the middle, at that point we have just a moment where we don't change our position at all um, in, uh, in a certain amount of time. So at that moment our velocity is going to be zero. And it looks like we've probably got, uh, we don't know exactly what the shape is, but we'll assume that it's going to be a straight line here simply because at this level in physics we don't work with any non-straight line velocity graphs, uh, or at least not over very, very long periods of time. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the assumptions that we make, that the acceleration is constant, that our velocity changes at a constant rate. Now if we look at the rest of this graph, we see that, uh, uh, again, we start moving just a little bit, but now in the opposite direction in certain increments of time.
and then gradually in that increment of time we move farther and farther and so our graph is going to be uh, just a continuation of that straight line that we ended with until we end up with a pretty big velocity at the end here um, but now in the negative direction so those two graphs correspond now since this this these uh, two graphs represent the motion of I guess I'd say a ball going up and then falling back down these are graphs that we're going to be pretty familiar with that we see uh, quite often